Sikata in a tosa in a tose e costo pina tequina a rada balada sata e gino pronto go sicata reketo sata e go boloto go sicata le doso no mono dogo boloto rete di cala balada sata e la doso tolo boloto go sicata ala da balada gasote all that God has for me I receive to Oh, Satali Kotolo Bolodo, Regeti Kasata, my eyes are alert, my ears are attentive. Oh, Sakiko Boroto Gosakata, my ears are attentive. Oh, Satino Moloto Gosikata, Rede de 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 Loto Bolodo Satalamate. I build up myself, I build up myself. Oh, Zatiko Sata, eh, Golo Bolodo Sata, Leko. I take the fire from within and I place it upon. I set myself ablaze. Hey, Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Rejoice. Woo! Glory. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right, so we're going to be saying some confessions this morning. Just like Pastor taught yesterday, we have to acknowledge who we are. In the kingdom of God, talk is not cheap. Tell your neighbor, talk is not cheap. Our talk is not cheap. Praise God. So you're going to say after me, there are rivers of living waters in me. There are rivers of living waters in me. I've drunk from the river of life. The Spirit of God lives in me. And this morning, because I have prayed in the Spirit, I am able to take from within and put upon me. I am able to fill up myself with the Holy Ghost. I am able to charge this atmosphere because I am the atmosphere of Jesus. Because I am the atmosphere of Jesus. Jesus is here. Because we are here. Jesus is here. Because we are here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody shout glory. Come on. Somebody shout glory. If you know you've got the victory, I want you to jump on your feet and shout glory. Come on, clap your hands, everybody. Woo! Clap those hands, everybody. Hey! Yeah! Come on, clap your hands, everybody. One, two. Come on. Yeah! What are you turning to wine? Woo! Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. Woo! Like our God. Say, our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Lord, you were higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome in power. Our God. Our God. God is greater, our God is stronger, Lord, you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our, our God is greater, our God is stronger.
Lift your voice and worship to him this morning. Release your worship, release your worship. And you, Lord, you are holy. And no one can worship you. For all the things you've done for me, mm, yeah, and no one can worship you for me. Say, here's my worship, here's my worship, Woo! all of my work. Jesus, receive my worship, receive my worship. Come on, say, all of my worship. One more time. Say, here's my worship. Sing, all of my worship. Jesus, receive my worship. And all of my. Come on, say, say, you, Lord, say. Your voice and say, Oh, and no one, oh, I can worship you for me for all the things, for all the things you've done. Things you've done. Come on, say, Things you've done for me, said, And no one can worship you for me.
life, it's our greatest honor to worship the one who died for us. Is that true? Can you shout glory? Glory to God. It's still our time to go deeper. Not your not let your neighbor say deeper. Hallelujah. We're going to be praying. Matthew chapter 15 from verse 13. Pastor showed us how to build a lifestyle of prayer yesterday. Praise the name of the Lord. So you didn't just pray well yesterday. What you did was you set yourself on a culture and a lifestyle where you pray better in private, in public. Praise the name of the Lord. Matthew 15 from verse 13. Jesus said, Every plant which my heavenly Father had not planted shall be rooted up. Praise the name of the Lord. And then in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 from verse 4, it tells us something. It says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So we are the mechanism through the word of God for pulling out every plant that our heavenly Father has not planted. It says, Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So you have a role to defend the integrity of the gospel. Think about that. That assignment is not just for your pastor, for your leader. It's for you as well. Praise the name of the Lord. And so you are taught so that you can be a teacher as well. Think about it. So in this month of vintage Jesus, we'll be praying and we'll declare that as a church, we are committed to defending the integrity of God's word in love. Praise the name of the Lord. Are you ready to pray? That every thought, say every thought, every philosophy, every doctrine that sets itself against the knowledge of God is cast down and rooted out. Say the truth of God's word prevails. Can you pray in the name of Jesus? I declare in this country and in all the nations of the world that the truth of God's word prevails. We bring down false doctrines by the power in the name of Jesus. I play my part in teaching the truth of God's word in love. The body of Christ grows when every joint supplies its part. And I supply from today. I pay attention to learning the word. I pay attention to doing the word. I pay attention to being a teacher of the word. The same way the heroes of faith defended this gospel. I'm committed because Jesus is coming soon. And so through my actions, in my prayer life, in my study life, in ministry, I cry Maranatha. I declare that every plan my heavenly father has not planted is rooted out. And that's why I preach the gospel. Hey, I preach the hope of salvation to everyone who believes. Now as an ambassador, God is help uh, is beseeching others through me. And so I tell them, God is not holding your sins against you. I tell them, be ye reconciled unto God. And so I cast down thoughts and imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. I take my ministry seriously in love. Souls may have been lost to false doctrine, but I restore them. People may have turned their backs because of church hurt, but I restore them in love. I restore them in knowledge. By the Spirit of God, I take my assignment seriously to defend the integrity of God's one. Regarding the gospel, regarding spiritual gifts, regarding eternal life, I stand at the door and watch. In prayer and in the teaching of the word, I take my place to defend the faith that was once delivered to our fathers. Because of me, my generation and generations to come 
will hear the undiluted truth of God's word. Not only will I not be silent in worship, I will not be silent in doctrine. And that's why I take study seriously. I'm bold to proclaim the word of God. I have wisdom to teach in love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, when you come to church, it's the responsibility of our pastors and the other pastors to prepare you for ministry. There's a call upon your life. There's a call upon your life. Hallelujah. And so Paul says something that even though we aren't apostles and he was talking to apostles, we should learn from in Acts 6 from verse 4. He said, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And you'll be praying the same for yourself. It's a commitment in prayer. You're saying this month and beyond, I declare that as an individual and as a church, I'm committed to Christian devotion. I read my Bible. I pray every day. Every day, I put fire on my altar. I'm not slothful in business. I'm not slothful in the business of spiritual growth. I'm fervent in spirit. Serving the Lord. Can you pray in the name of Jesus? Every day I put fire on my altar. I'm not slothful in business. I'm fervent in spirit. Serving the Lord. The same way you plan to learn for work. The same way you plan a retreat at work. The same way you are committed to projects at work. And in your family, I'm committed to take personal responsibility for my spiritual growth I take on Christian devotion as a lifetime project that lag in my prayer life is over never to resurface again that laziness in my study life is over never to resurface again I'm not slothful in the business of spiritual growth in prayer, I mean business. In the study of the word, I mean business. In evangelism, I mean business. When it comes to being discipled and raising disciples, I mean business. Every day, I take from within and I put upon fire on my altar. I'm burning, I'm shining. Like a truck or ticket, not like a desk, not slothful. Hey, I'm born and I'm shining. Like a sugar potato, to pony get a keto. Lamba shut up at a party. My favor is discernible. Le bata laka potato. And even when there's nobody around to discern, I'm still fervent. Fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. That's me. Zeke shoko potato pote. Rabba take You can decide. To have an effective prayer life this morning. I prayed for one and a half hours yesterday during service. That will not be the last time I'm praying that long. I deliver the word of knowledge during reboot camp. That will not be the last time. That's my life. Favor is my life. And as I prepare in secret, as I cook myself in secret, on the outside, my prophet in a place to all. Because I step out and I heal the sick. I step out and raise the dead. By the supply of the Spirit, I bring forth solutions. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Are you ready to make your confessions? Can you remember what pastor said yesterday? So after cooking yourself in prayer, you spice yourself up. You garnish yourself up by confessions. Glory to God. Let's make it count. Say, I declare that in this month and beyond, oh, you can do better. Say, my eyes are open to see the revelation of Jesus. I know who he is. I know who I am. Because of who he is. 
I know who he has made me. The same spirit that was in Jesus, that created the heavens and the earth, that raised Christ up from the dead, dwells in me. Therefore, I do the works of Jesus. And like he said, greater works than he did, I do every day. I bear fruits of the Spirit. I manifest the gifts of the Spirit. I declare that as he is, so I am in this world. His attributes are my attributes. I mirror, I mirror the integrity of Jesus in devotion, in doctrine, in dynamis. I mirror the integrity of Jesus. I declare that I'm full of power from the crown of my head to the tip of my toes. One moment, this was a confession that Pastor told us yesterday that he made and things began to change. So make sure it counts. Say from the crown of my head to the tip of my toes, anywhere I step into, you can move a little, anywhere I step into, People see it, they discern it by the contact of my eyes, by my appearance, by the laying of my hands, by my words. It's communicable, it's transferable. I carry something contagious. It's the fire of the Holy Ghost. I prosper in the will of God. I walk in the will of God. I have limitless ability limitless capacity these hands to the impossible these hands never lack say men are coming from afar can you see them say men are coming from afar they come bearing gifts they come to favor me people are dreaming about me and they are commanded to favor me i declare that the truth of god's word prevails through me through my local church, through the church of Jesus worldwide, every tree that our Heavenly Father has not planted is rooted out. Ministries that teach the truth are raised. Disciples obedient to the faith are raised. We establish policies of righteousness. We establish policies of righteousness. We propagate the influence of the gospel in our generation. I declare that Celebration Church is marked by signs and wonders. We are a studious church. We are a praying church. We are an evangelical church. I am studious. I am prayerful. I am evangelical. I declare that the impact of Celebration Church will shake the nooks and crannies of the world. You can rejoice there. We'll shake the nooks and crannies of the world. We are 10 times better, 10 times stronger, 10 times faster by the power of the Holy Ghost. Say that's our life. Can you rejoice? There's no question of your greatness No searching of your power All the wonder of your glory To you forty years is but one hour Your knowledge is all encompassing And your wisdom, it has no end you alone are God yeah. For you are God alone Your mercy is everlasting Your truth is here always 
You are he who was and is and is to come. Who is he that can number your days? You flung the sun to burning space and the moonlight bows light from the day. Whoa, you alone are God. For you are God alone. How many of you believe it? Now unto the King. For you alone, a God. Oh, we say, for you alone. So I'm going to take the verse again. I'll take the verse again. There's no question of your greatness. No searching of your power All the wonder of his glory To him forty years is but one hour oh, yeah. His knowledge is all encompassing To his wisdom there is no end oh, For he is God alone. God's mercy is everlasting. His truth is here always. He is he who was and is and is to come. Who is he that could number your days? He flung the sun to burn his face And the moonlight draws light from the day Oh, he alone is God I am a Oh, for he is God Alone, now unto the king, we say, now unto the king, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, the wise God, nothing can match his wisdom. We say, for he is, he is God alone. You are God alone. Only you are God. We say, yeah. Yeah.
for he is God alone yeah. for you alone are God come on And dominion and power forever and ever, amen, be all glory, dominion and power. voices we give you all we yourself before the Father. Express yourself before the Father. Come on, lift up those beautiful voices. We give you all. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, we give you all, we give 
give you all, we give you all. Ya 
Express your love to him. Hey, uh. Yeah. 
we will rise in your name. Yeshua, I'm a seer, Lion of Judah, I couldn't hear Jemba. Yeshua, I'm a seer, Lion of Judah, I couldn't hear Jemba. We say, Yeshua, Yeshua. you know him worship him like he's dear to your heart thank you thank you Holy Ghost we worship you we love you thank you Lord thank you Lord you've changed our lives we honor you today thank you thank you Lord thank you Jesus thank you Lord Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank, Thank, Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Take a moment to thank him for the program yesterday. Thank him for the lives that were touched. Thank him because this church will never be the same again. Just thank him right now. Hallelujah. 
In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father, we thank you for your spirit. Thank you for what you've done with us. We love it. We rejoice in it. We are strong in it. We will never be the same again. We will shake this world with your message and by your spirit. We will reach the unreached and tell the untold. Our neighborhood will know that we have received something. Our offices will know that we have received something. Our schools will know that we have received something. Because we will serve like people who expect your coming, who cry Maranatha. We will pray like never before. Speak in tongues like never before. And we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Come and say loud, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, please be seated. Glory be to God. You see, I like that bubble. There's, you guys are boiling. I like it. Never change. All right? This is the new normal for you. Never change. Never change. As I walked in and I saw you guys worshiping, I've never seen this particular branch like this before. Never. Never. And it's contagious, you see. It's contagious. When you act like this and you serve like this and you worship like this, then people will want what you have. Everything about Jesus was contagious. When he preached, the Bible says people noticed that he preached like someone who had power, not like the Sadducees. That's what they said. When he prayed, it was different also. The Jews, the, the, the disciples, many of them were following John the Baptist before. But when they saw Jesus pray, they came and said, teach us to pray. Because there is something about favor that is contagious. You cannot make the world catch the fire of the gospel without being passionate. Not just going through the motion, but being passionate. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy. The objective of yesterday was achieved. <laughs> Glory to God. All right, turn your Bibles quickly. Ephesians chapter 4. What I'm going to share with you is very simple, straightforward, and I don't intend to spend too much time. But it's also very important. Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 11. You were not there yesterday, were you? You were not there yesterday. The Lord asked me to pray for you. If you were there yesterday, I should have prayed for you. I saw you in a vision. And it's that thing about the supply of the Spirit. I don't want to cook it up. It has to come again. I understand you must have been busy. Your voice... It's going to travel far. The voice is going to travel far. You would, you would do great for the body of Christ. Your songs, your music, because there's a fa special favor coming upon you, coming upon your work to cause it to spread and to expand. So as we go through this service, I want you to receive that with your spirit. You know, feel free to pray in tongues under your breath because something is going to come on you. Okay? You believe that the Lord can raise a man, right? Mark this. It's happening to you. God bless you. Sit down. <laughs> Hallelujah. So Ephesians 4 from verse 11. It says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. This is so simple yet so profound. It says that we henceforth be no more children. 
tell the person by your side respectfully, say, grow up, grow up. He says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. By the slight of men, the cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. So now we see the major responsibility of ministry gifts. Thank God for the healings and thank God for, respectfully, maybe breakthrough conferences, whatever else we do in church. But we have one primary assignment, equipping the saints for ministry. So the fruit of a successful ministry will be in its members. Not in the size of its branches, not in how majestic the venues are, not in how much money the ministry has. The true measure of the success of a ministry will be its people. How equipped are they? How strong are they in the grace that is in Christ Jesus? So when you pick at random any 10 members who have been attending the church for two years, three years, and you ask them questions, there are some things they should know. Just the same way you will consider someone a joke who has been in school four years, claiming to be studying engineering and does not know the basics of engineering. So when you, you, you go for an interview, the questions that you would ask, and in fact, the opportunities that you can take advantage of will be consistent with the level of the training that you claim to have received. Do you understand what I'm saying? And that's how it's meant to be in the body of Christ. We just have this um, attitude subconsciously, many people, where we just come to church because that's what we should do on a Sunday morning. But there should be a goal in mind. He gave apostles and prophets, evangelists and teachers, pastors and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints. So there is a process and there is a result till we all come. Do you understand what I'm saying? So um, now you will always be a student of the word of God, but there should be progress. Perhaps when you first attended this church and you were hearing the word, you were like, oh my God, where do I start? I have a lot to learn. In three years' time, the hunger should still be there. You should still feel like you have a lot to learn, but you should be able to celebrate how far you've come in your understanding. It's important. But it's just my experience. In the, I'm, I'm saying respectfully, in many churches, you find someone who has been in church 20 years and cannot share from the word of God authoritatively. An average believer in Nigeria knows a hundred scriptures about prosperity, but cannot defend any Christian doctrine. It is such a commercial approach to Christianity. We know hundred scriptures on healing, hundred scriptures on prosperity and favor. But when it comes to the doctrines of Christ, the core of our faith, we don't know. And then you just wonder, what then, you know, like, like Paul's dilemma when he found these people who claimed to be believers. And he said, have you been filled with the Holy Spirit since you believed? And he said, they have not even heard if there be any Holy Ghost. He said, unto what then were you baptized? What are you doing? I remember the time, I've told this story time and again, and this is what strengthened my commitment to preaching the truth of the gospel. My wife went to a supermarket, you know, she just wanted to branch as we were driving. So I parked outside, she went in there, and these guys had been giving flyers from their church. I hope you know there's a difference between inviting people to your church and evangelizing. So the flyers read, and I'm saying this respectfully, the flyers read, come to our church, Jesus makes rich, Jesus heals, Jesus, you know. And so they went, committed members of their church. But the lady in that shop 
attends Jehovah's Witness. And say what you want about that ministry. You can fault them on, you know, it's actually a Christian cult. They, they, they are not orthodox at all. Many of the things that they teach and they opine are very false. But you cannot accuse them of not being evangelical or of not focusing on anything besides what they really believe. Let's test it here. I usually like to do this census. If you're here and a member of Jehovah's Witness has visited your family or tried to preach to you, raise your hand. Just look at this. Everybody. Do you now see that, respectfully, a lot of Pentecostals are joking. If, what, if you truly believe what they're teaching is false, yet they are more committed than you, what does that say about you? If you believe what you are teaching is the truth, then why is their passion more than yours? Do you know they have a logbook? They record evangelism hours. So at the end of the year, they can tell how long they've spent preaching the gospel. You, know, you, you didn't hear what I said. From their investments, you can tell their passion. And it's weird. Why all this effort if you believe only 144,000 will be saved? Why all this effort? And then you believe salvation is for all men and you're not working as hard. Do you see the problem? And when she entered, when they entered, she said, come to our church, Jesus will make you rich. She said, who is Jesus? I will prove to you from that Bible you are holding that Jesus is not God. And she sat down, sat the evangelist down and began to evangelize the evangelist. <laughs> By the time my wife came in, one of them was already saying, she has a point. <laughs> <laughs> so my wife came back to the car laughing, saying, you need to see comedy. Comedy is happening. You will like this, come. So I came, I interjected, I scattered everything. <laughs> but it all it made me cry these are passionate Christians they've been in church, they love the Lord but do you know that if you cannot defend the deity of Christ what then do you know I, I, do you understand, it just made me realize this is supposed to be part of the elementary doctrines before you even get saved. So what did you hear that you believed to be saved? Wow, wow. So he says, he gave apostles and prophets and evangelists and teachers for the perfecting of the saints for ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith, so now, initially, when ministry starts, there's the disparity in understanding and in knowledge. So we have to labor and to, you know, persuade you from the word of God about the truth. And then a the time comes that our understanding becomes aligned. It becomes like mirrored images. We come in the unanimity of the faith. So that we say the same thing. We are perfectly united in the same mind. Do you understand what I'm saying? Such that wherever you are during the week, if you are confronted with the same questions, you will answer the same way. That's how to know a church that is growing. Unanimity of the faith. Another sign is this. Mm-hmm. Look at verse 14 and read together. One, two, go. Now he's defining maturity. You know, some of you, your picture of a mature Christian is someone who can walk miracles. Whereas Judas walked miracles. Don't forget, he sent all, Jesus sent all the twelve. And Judas worked miracles. And he didn't believe. 
And working miracles is great. But the primary way to discern someone who has grown is this. It says, you henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Someone defined wisdom in a very powerful way, and I like it. He said wisdom is the ability to recognize difference. Ah. The ability to recognize difference. Not just what is false from what is true, but what is true from what is nearly true. The problem with the body of Christ is not actually false and true. It is true and nearly true. But it is the nearly that is killing people. If you have a cup of lemonade, and so, <laughs> this is a horrible illustration from Andrew Womack, but I'll say it. If you have a cup of lemonade and someone puts a drop of poop excreter, just a, just a, just a pinch. Are you still going to drink it? Why? It's just a pinch. It shouldn't count much. Little leaven, the Bible says, leaving at the whole lump. That's the problem with the body of Christ. And listen, our intentions may be sincere, but you can sincerely kill people. It says, you henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. So now, you know you're a child when every church to you is a good church. That's, that's what this is saying. Every wind of doctrine, every preaching, as long as they say Jesus, you think is worthy of your attention. And you know, some people think that in giving every teaching attention, they are walking in love, not knowing that it is immaturity, not love. Are you getting what I'm saying? If you really love people, you will want them to know the truth. You will want them to know the truth. If you really love people, huh, it will break your heart when you see people deceived. Tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men, the corny and craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. So, the more you grow, the more circumspect you become regarding where you can go, who you can listen to, who can lay hands on you. Who, you become more circumspect. Some of you, anybody, even if you are walking on the road, you know those people that wear white and will just come and shake shakere for you and just say, ah, uh, some people, once they just say, there is something on you. I'm seeing something on Can I pray for you? You say, ah, sir. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Why are people so gullible? You know, it breaks my heart. Something is happening um, on Instagram now. Now, every week, there is at least one imposter account pretending to be me and trying to extort money from people. And you know, initially when I saw it, I said, oh, idiot, nobody will fall for this. But to my surprise, send, so you, hey God, you send a DM to people saying, um, I don't know you. <laughs> they always have the same line. I don't know you, but I was praying and I saw you um, send money to this orphanage. And then, okay, even if you want to fall for it, you want to send money to an orphanage, you now see the account number, Chinyere, something, something, something. Ah! The, 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 the orphanage is not registered. And someone said, I emptied my, my savings. Ah! I said, we have a problem in this. What is wrong? <laughs> Why is it that the moment anyone mentions Jesus, you lose, people lose their senses. You lose discretion. You lose, can't you check? 
The Bible says even the devil shows up as an angel of light. Forget all the movies. The devil will not always show up with a conspicuously red horn and, you know, very, very... In Genesis, he showed up as a friend. Who has your best interests? Showing you a better option. That's how he shows up. As an angel of light. Like he has some profound wisdom for you that, that you can't miss. You have to learn to be discerning. We are in the last days. All kinds of things are happening. All kinds. All kinds. And if you find a good church, thank your God and stay there and serve. All right? It is curiosity, unnecessary curiosity that makes people fall. Eve was curious. She said, the Bible says she saw the fruit as one desirous to make one wise. How can you tell from looking at a fruit that if I eat it, I will be wise? <sighs> curiosity. Let me taste it. That, that's one thing that the Lord has saved me from all through my life. I'm, I'm not, I don't jump. Sometimes it's a problem because, okay, for instance, um, when I travel, <laughs> I eat what I know. I don't, I only eat by recommendation. Ah, it's nice, you should try it. <laughs> I don't just go around. The last trip, I opened the fridge in my room, and it was filled with alcohol. So their, their plan is you drink, then we credit it to your room, we pay at the end. I've never tasted that thing before. And for one week, I had the fridge full of alcohol. It, it didn't just catch my fancy. No point. Because the thing is this, you think the people who are struggling to break the addiction are foolish that you you are stronger than them they don't know what they are doing <laughs> i'd rather not try this is a safer way to live praise the name of the lord and when it comes to the christian doctrine it must be like that also look at let me move faster now second corinthians chapter 11 verse 3 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, he says, But I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through, through his subtlety, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. I like the fact that it says simplicity. Some of you, you like it complex. If, if someone lays hands on you and says, Be healed, your faith will not be stayed. But when they carry salt, Mix Maggie, throw it on you like this. Or tie it in a line on. Ask you to hang it on your neck for seven days. Then you will know that there, you know, some of us, we just like, let me tell you this. Oh my goodness. This will change your life. Samson fell from grace because he thought that once his hair had been cut, he's finished. But at the end, he prayed to God without his hair. He made a mistake. He said, just this one time. And then at that moment, he discovered that it was never really about the hair. We've learned to trust things in the church too much. We like to tie a mantle. And we're telling you, the anointing is in you. We're trying to persuade you. See, what is the sense in going to the market, buying oil that should have been used to fry some nice egg? I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm coming. Then you carry it and then pray for it. 
That means the source of the power was from you. So what then is the use of the oil? If it is the oil, don't pray. Just buy it and use. But if you have to pray on it, then just pray. <laughs> but people don't like, ah. You know, you won't know. You have to know that the power is moving. I just say, padlock service. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Bad luck service. And then you see ridiculous things in this place. I saw a video of a church. They were throwing punches at the devil. Like, I said, ah, God. Hey, God. God is trying. Sometimes I just imagine I have a wild imagination of God and then just laughing that, hey, God, these children. <laughs> Wait till, be de- wait till they occur. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> I throw a punch. <laughs> God. Hallelujah. From the simplicity of the gospel, the simplicity that is in Christ, it's so simple. It says, for if he, this is verse 4 now, for if he that cometh, preaches another Jesus. Can you say another Jesus? Take note of that phrase. If he that comes preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit, can you say another spirit? Which you have not received, or another gospel, say another gospel. Another Jesus. Another spirit, another gospel. He says, the way I see you guys, you might bear with him. Listen, every prosperous false ministry is prospering on account of the inordinate desires of people. You don't understand. It is the demand that makes the supply thing. <laughs> That's the way it is. So he says that in the last days, perilous times will come, people will not endure sound doctrine. So they will heap to themselves. Teachers having itchy ears. So now you blame the false teachers, but it's the people. It's the perspective to ministry that has made those platforms. Are you getting what I'm saying? So we're starting a teaching series this month. And whatever else you like to hear in a church, reckon that this is important. Because some people have a lopsided view of love and love preaching. Oh, don't talk about that. Let's just do our own. (laughs) What is our own? Rebuke is part of preaching to correct things that are false. Paul told Timothy, he says, preach the word in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, correct. So reproof and rebuke is part of preaching. It's a crucial aspect of it. So what the theme for this month is vintage Jesus. Vintage Jesus. And it's a teaching on orthodoxy. I'll define what orthodoxy is. But we are just saying, we must make sure that the Jesus that we worship today and that we preach today is vintage. The same Jesus of old. Because it has been prophesied that there would be many other Jesuses. That's the concept of the Antichrist and the spirit of the Antichrist. Some will come presenting another Jesus. Presenting another gospel. Presenting another spirit, you must be able to discern. And this is a training that you must have. All right? So what is orthodoxy? Orthodoxy refers to the singleness of beliefs. That's what it means. It refers to singleness of beliefs. 
It refers to the creed and the doctrine of a group of people. The creed and the doctrine of a group of people. Now, Christianity is an orthodox faith. Christianity is an orthodox faith. Meaning there is a singleness of belief. There is one faith, one baptism, one God, one Father of all. One singleness. Such that if another person is teaching something else, it is either one of us is wrong or both of us are wrong. We cannot both be right. Forget all those silly illustrations about seeing um, a particular image from different angles. Why do we come up with silly illustrations? You know, there was one I saw. <laughs> there was a number on the floor. From this side, it looks like the number nine. From this other side, it looks like the number six. You know, when you turn nine upside down, it looks like six. And so two people were arguing. One said it's nine. The other said it's six. And they were now like, you see, that's how religion is. We are both correct. And I'm just laughing. Imagine that was the number needed to detonate a bomb or to stop a bomb from going. Press anyone now. I don't want six or nine. You are both correct. <laughs> because they just think he's a political party. Anyone is okay. But we're talking about life and death. It is the true message that saves us. So you better be careful to make sure that what... You don't guess, oh. If you people are not sure, go and call the person that put the number. Call him. He will not tell you, oh, he's six. You are meant to stand from here. You say, why are you standing? <laughs> That's what he will tell you. <laughs> because the person, the number is not what you think it is. It is what the person who wrote it was trying to communicate. For communication to be possible, I must be able to write something and expect that you will read and understand what I intended to communicate. It's important. Otherwise, communication is destroyed. In the church, in the name of Rema, we have destroyed communication. Simple things. I went up by revelation. Up. You know, the, every single word must mean something deep. How would you notice? Years ago, a young man came to my office. Uh, why are you not in school? Uh, I, I don't really like private school. I, want pri um, I don't like public schools. I want to go to a private school and I can't afford it. Ah, years are going by. Why don't you just go to a private school? The Lord told me to go to a private school. How, please? He now opened First Timothy chapter. I'm serious, though. He says, they that use the office of a deacon obtain a good degree. So I'm serious, so that <laughs> private school is good degree. Now you are laughing. Is that not how they taught him to interpret the Bible? Don't we do it all the, all the time? Good degree. Ha! I look the boy in the lab, say, hey, your goatee, eh? it will reach Nasarawa. <laughs> and what he did not know is that at that time, we could afford to sponsor him to a, private, to a public school or a federal school. And if he had just said, okay, uh, what I was going to tell him is, all right, go ahead. We'll sponsor you both. Private school. Ah, and who will battle with the Lord? Give me the Lord, say. <laughs> The will lost a good degree. <laughs> Let me not spoil his work and sponsor you to a federal school. <laughs> you see the problem now? One text that explains orthodoxy well is 1 Corinthians 15, 1. 1 Corinthians 15, from verse 1 to 8. It says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, wherein you stand, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory that w w what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. He says, for I delivered to you, first of all, which I also received, 
Paul is saying, I didn't make this up. What I preached, I also received. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. I. This is what makes orthodoxy powerful. Listen. Did they not all witness Christ dying? He said, you all saw it. He didn't say you saw it in the news. Uh, maybe I, you don't get what I'm saying. He didn't say, as you all know, Christ died. As Instablog said, Christ died. That's not what he said. He said, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. This is what makes orthodoxy orthodoxy. The fact that no matter our experience, it must still align with what is written. I don't know that it is true because I experienced it. I know that it is true because the word of God said it, and therefore that validates my experience. You must put the word above your experience. Such that Jesus was walking on the road to Emmaus, and he saw two people talking about, you know, ah, the, the Christ. Oh, they killed him, and we thought he was going to be a great prophet to bring political change and all of that. And they were doubting that he was alive. Jesus did not say, you see, you doubt us. Touch me. I, I'm alive. Did you not see? That's not what he said. Luke 24, 25. He says, oh fools, slow of heart to believe what the scripture has said. He didn't say slow of heart to believe what even I said. Did I not tell you I would rise? It's me now. Mm -mm. He pointed them to the scriptures. If Jesus can do that, every man of God must do that. We don't really care if you went to heaven, you went to hell, and who you claim to see there. It is what the Bible says about salvation that we believe. If you like, go to hell and say you saw Bimbo Odukoya. That she was there because she was wearing trousers. And people, people are so silly. Let, let me tell you this. Don't forget the parable of, not the parable, it was, it was never a parable. It was a true story. If it was a parable, he would not have seen Abraham. Abraham. Abraham is a real person. Of the rich man and Lazarus. The rich man said, you know what? Please send someone from here. To go and preach to my brothers so that they will not come here also. What was God's reply? If they will not hear the prophet there on earth, neither would they hear anyone from here. Meaning God does not send people from hell to come and want people on the earth. Simple. I mean, it's right there in the story. You know the story, right? That's not God's method. God's method for conversion is his word, not someone coming with some phony story about, you know, there was a funny woman who claimed to go to hell and God gave her a list of false ministries. So she came and said, this ministry, false. Pastor Adeboye, he's using magical powers. Uh, something, something. Sha counseled a lot of people. And then there's this ministry in this country that has already been beefing all those ministries. So when they saw that, they said, eh, eh, we have been saying it. And called her on their platform to share her experiences. She didn't know that, they didn't know that there would be part two. <laughs> so, no, they didn't call her on the platform. They played her video. You know that the woman will go to hell again. <laughs> so she went to hell and God gave her a fresh list. <laughs> and guess... <laughs> this ministry was now there. So the pastor, it was awkward. The pastor was now trying to say, you know what? She's not correct. No, she's correct though. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> Stick to the Bible, you will not hear.
Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve, and after that he was seen of five hundred men at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. So now they had evidence of people who had seen Jesus, but he first started by the scriptures. What the scriptures had said, not, people were, not what people were saying. This is how to preach. Not experiences. According to the scriptures. So even Jesus came as a fulfillment of the scriptures. And we were to discern him by what the scriptures said. Not just because he said I'm the Christ. But because in his manner of life and his modus operandi, we saw a consistency with what the scriptures said the Messiah will do and the Messiah will be. It is the scriptures that forms our basis for discernment. This is so crucial. Hallelujah. Let me just give you an, an example of scriptures like that. In Psalm 110, there are some Psalms that are called Messianic Psalms. And what are Messianic Psalms? They're Psalms that prophetically foretell the ministry of the Messiah. This was several centuries before Christ came. Many of you, your view of David is that, ah, he could play the strings. Or he was a warrior. But what? He was most relevant for in the kingdom was actually prophecy. He prophesied about Jesus 60 times. And this is one of those Psalms. He said, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until I make the, thine enemies thy footstool. Now, in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 13 and Hebrews chapter 10 verse 13, the writer of Hebrews tells us, that that scripture was actually talking about Jesus. He said, to which of the angels did he say, sit at my right hand till I make the enemies your footstool? Meaning this was talking about Jesus. From henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. It was talking about Jesus here. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 13. And Hebrews chapter 1 verse 13 also. But David foretold that this will happen. Hallelujah. Psalm 110 verse 2. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of the enemies. All of this pointing to the Messiah. Verse 3. It says, Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power, in the beauty of holiness from the womb of the morning. Thou hast the dew of the, thy youth. It says, Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. This is so powerful. A powerful prophecy of the administration of the Christ. And his, you know, what his salvation is going to birth in us. He says, thy people, can you say thy people? Shall be willing in the day of your power. You know what that means? It means his power will produce willingness. It means his kingdom will not be made up of people who are subdued but of people who are transformed. So we are serving him not because anybody forced us, but because he has changed our lives. Willing in the day of his power. It's unlike under the law. If you don't do this, this will happen. This will, you know, and all of that. And there is still a system of justice and repercussions in Christ. I tell you that for sure. However, we are not doing it he has made us willing. He has changed our hearts. He has taken the stony heart out of our flesh, giving us a heart of flesh. He has put his spirit in us and made us. Are you getting this? Keep his status to follow his judgments willingly. So Christians are not bad people trying to do good. They are bad people transformed by the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Jeremiah prophesied about this. In Jeremiah chapter 31 from verse 31. He said, Behold, the days come, 
said the Lord, I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel, not according to the covenant I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which covenant they did break. Although I was an husband to them, said the Lord, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, said the Lord, I will put my law this time around, not on a tablet of stone, but in their inward parts. I will write it in your heart. Hey, my goodness. In their inward parts, and write it in their heart, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Verse 34. And they shall teach no man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest. Meaning... Nobody will have to force you. <laughs> you will come to a point where you are not praying because people are there and they are making you pray. Even your, in your privacy, you wake up in the morning and you pray. He has made you willing. No one will have to cajole you consistently. That's the ministry of the Spirit. Making you live and act in a manner that is consistent with the will of God. Say loud, amen. amen. It says no one will teach his brother. And by the way, this was talking about moral excellence and doctrinal consistency. He's not saying in the New Testament church, you won't need a pastor, you won't need a teacher. He's saying that by the Spirit of God, no one will have to give you close marking. You won't need a private investigator. The Holy Ghost in you will help you live in a manner consistent with the will of God. Now, someone is like, what does this have to do with orthodoxy? Everything. Because John uses the same thought process here. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 18, <laughs> I'll tell you why I'm laughing later. 1 John chapter 2, from verse 18, it says, little children... It is the last time. Oh my God. This is so profound. I'm telling you the same thing. It is the last time. And as you have heard that the Antichrist shall come, even now there are many Antichrists. Meaning his spirit is already in operation. There are many Antichrists. Whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. If they had been with us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they are not of us. Verse 20, everybody read together, one, two, go. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. But you have an unction from the Holy One. And you know all things. This is not a text for exams. Some people have used this text for example. Bro, read though. You don't know all things in that context. If you don't read, you see yourself. Why is it that Christians always like the easy way? Rukayat is reading. He's seen all the... He's always read. I know all things. Go and read. It's part of what I'm saying. <laughs> All right. So what is he referring to here? John himself had taught these people the word, trained them. So he's definitely not trying to invalidate the ministry of the word and the need for a teacher. That's not what he's saying. He's talking about protection from error. Protection from error. That even when your pastor is not there, and you are on the road, and a strange person approaches you, by the person's communication, you will know this is not the Lord. By the spirit and by the communication, you will know. So I know that there are many antichrists. As a pastor, I have a bit of a paranoia, but I also trust the work of the Holy Spirit in you. You'll be all right. No one needs to, I mean, you'll be all right. Hallelujah. Verse 26, these things I have written unto you concerning them that seduce you. So, of course, if he didn't believe, 
If he thought that they didn't need a teacher, he won't write. Are you seeing this? However, the context is slightly different. He says, but the anointing, oh my goodness. But the anointing which you have received it of him abideth in you. And you need not that any man teach you, but the same anointing teacheth you all things. And is truth and is no lie, even as it is taught and you abide in him. This is so powerful. Many people only think about the anointing from the standpoint of healing the sick, breaking every yoke, family curses, and all of that. It's not just about family curses and breaking it. The anointing preserves you in the way of the truth. Say loud, amen. amen. Never forget this. The anointing preserves you in the way of the truth. He said, you have an auction from the Holy One. <laughs> Say that we may have an auction from the Holy One. Say that again with conviction. I have an auction from the Holy One. Say, I cannot be deceived. Say, I will not be tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. Say, I'm preserved in the truth. Hallelujah. Well, that's powerful. So you have to recognize this as the ministry of the Spirit in your life. Protects you from dangerous curiosity. Some people just want to read all kinds of books. Let me tell you this. In these last days, you will need this anointing. Because gone are the days where you could just be circumspect um, and just guard your heart from what you know and what you don't know and all of that. There was a time that if you don't visit nude sites, you won't see nude images. Those times are gone. Yes or yes? We have to say it as it is. So now the strategy must change. A parent knows you, 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 you can't just, just protect children. If you want to protect them from everything bad, they won't go out. And they won't watch the TV. Something happened. After a powerful session here in the afternoon, I went and I'm a family man. I can't help it. So even in the midst of a program, I just want to see my kids, know how they're doing. So I they came to my hotel room. And the demon just came in dancing. Allow me to enjoy myself. Allow me to... First of all, I won't lie, it was very funny. I first laughed, and then I was worried. You know. <laughs> I'm still in shock. So now, we have to adopt the strategy of Noah, where there is bad exposure everywhere. It's no longer a time where you say, okay, um, people are bad in this place, so I will stay here. In the days of Noah, everyone was bad. <laughs> he was the only one. He and his family were the only ones that were living a righteous life in the entire world. Can you imagine? And so if he decided to join them, nobody would, nobody would say, ah, you see, you have joined them. Everybody was bad. He'd have, he had enough excuse to be corrupt. And yet he chose with his family. Hallelujah. He kept the faith consistently. Listen, this is the type of training you have to give your children. Because whether you like it or not, trust me. At least if you don't trust me, trust my wife. My wife is a good mother. She is. She is. And then... Okay, for the past week, I've picked my children from school every day. You know, we are both very involved. Yet my daughter comes in. Allow me to enjoy my time. <laughs> you know, so, so, I mean, it comes to a point, you have to trust the anointing. I'm telling you. 
The Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he cannot depart. The same training applies in the things of the Spirit. By the Spirit of God, people are preserved. Paul was very paranoid. You know, he wrote, to, 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 he wrote a letter. He said, I was afraid lest the, the, the deceiver has deceived you. <laughs> very paranoid because there's a lot of falsehood out there. I tend to be very paranoid too. I stalk members on Instagram. That's why some of you are not following me. But I'm still watching you. <laughs> Two weeks ago, there was a video of one musician in this country saying and the reason why he doesn't believe in marriage per se is because ah, the fact that he likes this lady will not stop him from liking another person and that he doesn't really have the grace to stay with one person. That's so. And then I looked down, and I saw a church member like. So I screenshot it, circled it, and sent to him. I said, that's, that's the way to, that's actually the way to train people. So I said, explain to me, what blessed you? <laughs> Why are they laugh? <laughs> what was profound about this? Are you a polygamist? And he said, ah, you must have mistakenly. I said, oh, okay. okay. Don't say, ah. I said, okay, no problem. Just, I did watch you. <laughs> but paranoia aside, we have to trust the anointing. Listen, you can literally be on YouTube and one false video just shows up that tries to shake everything that you have believed all your life. And thank God for apologetics. Listen, you, by the grace of God, you have a very grounded pastor. There are very, yes, there are very few arguments you will see that I've not heard before. You know, with theism, Islam, I, I can defend all of those. Most of them by a moment's notice. However, New falsehoods are coming up every day. It is not, a, I don't know all things in terms of broadness of knowledge. It's not impossible you have a question I don't have. But here is what I know. You have the Holy Ghost. You are kept by him. Preserved by him. There are times in my walk with God eh, that there were questions I didn't have the answer to intellectually, but I had it in my spirit. Ah, this thing is true. <laughs> this thing is true. It's just, it's just a conviction from within. Learn to trust the anointing like that. So the anointing, besides, one thing you need to know about the anointing is, if you don't, if you limit the scope, you will limit his experience. Whatever you, you are not aware the anointing can do, you will not see it. Did you hear what I said? Whatever you are not aware that the anointing can do, the day you stop believing that God heals, you will stop seeing miracles. The day you believe that, some people believe that God does not bless financially. And it is their experience. And now, you have to understand that this is the scope of the anointing. Preserving you in the true message of the gospel. Say loud, amen. amen. He said, you have an unction from the Holy One. And you know all things. Can you declare that one more time? Say, and I have an unction from the Holy One. <laughs> Say, I know all things. <laughs> Preach that to the person by your side. Say, you have an unction from the Holy One, brother or sister. Say so you, you know all things. Hallelujah. This is so important. But now, you must be circumspect. You must be intentional. Don't be tossed to and fro. 
Wisdom is the ability to recognize difference. We can't all be contradicting each other. Someone said this years ago, and it's so profound. He said some people will go to a program that has 10 guest ministers. All the 10 guest ministers will preach and contradict each other. All. And they will still be blessed. <laughs> you have a point. Mm. You also have a point. You know. <laughs> Hallelujah. But make sure you are growing in the knowledge of the truth. And make sure you become particular. Let me tell you. You cannot evangelize a world that you're not ready to distinguish yourself from. Did you hear what I just said? Uh -huh. Your difference is your advantage. Stop trying to blend in. Stop trying to blend in. If you blend in, you have no use. If it, see, if a salt loses a savor, of what use is it then? It is to be trodden on that foot. It's to be trodden on that foot. Your difference is your advantage. And learn to be different. Be respectful about it, but be firm. The Bible says to teach the truth in love. So I want to tell you this. Celebration Church is different. Take time to really understand what we teach, what we stand for. Compare it with what the Word of God teaches. And if you find it to be true, stand by it. Amen, somebody. Amen. This is so important. And that's my word for you today. It's a call to orthodoxy. Become a student of the word. See, may I not have church members who don't read their Bible. There are some things I care about more than numbers. Please take this thing. If we are doing this, let's do it. All right? If you have the Holy Ghost, have. Let's not kid ourselves. I'm not... I, I don't like to play games. I don't like to deceive myself. If this thing is true, it is true. If it is not, let's not waste our time. So... In your privacy, because you have the Holy Spirit, no one will have to cajole you. No one will have to teach his neighbor, say, know, know the Lord. There is that sense of urgency within you. That guidance leading you to open your Bible in the morning and read. Leading you to pray. Don't suppress it. If you no longer sense it, it's because you have suppressed it. Let it rise again. After yesterday's program, you are more likely to pray today. But if you ignore that urge today, if you ignore it tomorrow, it will keep getting weaker. That's the problem. So this month, we are going to examine a lot of biblical concepts. Water baptism, communion. Then we'll also do some teachings on how to interpret the Bible we want to make sure that what we believe is what the early church believed. Otherwise, we have believed in vain. You could be preaching another Jesus and not know. Make no mistake, the people who killed Jesus thought they were doing God a favor. Don't forget what I just said. They thought they were pleasing God. So that's why you have to be very circumspect theologically. Otherwise, you will miss God. You will be like the Jews who had been waiting for the Messiah for centuries. Old. He came. They killed him. Came, did the work, went. They are still waiting. Some are still waiting. He's coming again the second time. They are waiting for the first. So I want to urge you. Simple word. But please, take Bible study seriously. Try to listen to a sermon 
from us at least every day. Read your Bible. Pray every day. Make it a goal this week. No day will pass that you won't read your Bible. Especially the New Testament. Especially the epistles. No day will pass. You won't read your Bible. No day will pass. You won't pray. I want to encourage you also. Try to talk to someone about Jesus every day. And let's start from there. And we begin to open up this series more and more. You're going to be so blessed. So get ready for it. Now, I know we don't have midweek services on the mainland, on the island yet. Neither do we on the mainland. So it's all online. How many of you tune in for midweek service? Raise your hand. All right. All right. This number, <laughs> we're not regularly. Some of you are not regular. So I want to encourage you. Make it a point of duty, especially this month. Because some of the deep things we're going to share will be midweek service. So the, the Bible study will have the opportunity to go more in-depth and to rip apart some books. Get ready for, for a wonderful experience. All right? How many of you have not um, taken advantage of membership school? You've not been to membership school. Please raise your hand. All right. Thank you for that honesty. Can we have one today? Since we're ending service on time. Oh? We have this hall to ourselves to like 12 or so. So it's just, even if it's 40 minutes or 30 minutes, let's do just one, more, one class. In one month, they're done. Let's raise an army, evangelize the city together. All right? Please rise to your feet. Did you learn anything? Do, have you got fire on your altar? Glory to God. Just worship him right now. Thank him. Worship him and thank him. Give him the praise and the glory. Give him the praise and the glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Now you're going to pray a prayer. Jesus said, every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted shall be rooted out. You're going to pray that prayer over Nigeria and over the world. Every doctrine inconsistent with the truth of God's word. As a ministry, we root it out. In the mighty name of Jesus. By the grace of the Lord, we are receiving platforms to preach the gospel like never before. And in the name of Jesus, every plant, every doctrine, every ideology... That our Heavenly Father has not planted, we root out. We are bringing an end to deception. We are bringing an end to seduction. In the mighty name of Jesus, the truth of God's word is prevailing against falsehood. The message on our lips is going far and wide. Like a double-edged sword is piercing and dividing asunder. Let God be true and all men liars. Let every other name, every other doctrine fade away. As we rise in boldness preaching this message, we see falsehood fade away. We see falsehood fade away. We see falsehood fade away. Thank you, Father. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. You know you are growing when prayers like this touch you passionately as much as any other prayer. You know, growing up, all the normal prayers, you hear people whispering, now say, personal supplication. Ah, <laughs> everybody's voice will be loud. But learn to be passionate about things like this because God is passionate about it. All right? Were you blessed today? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for raising an army in us. A people that you can trust with your message. And we will preach this gospel faithfully. We will see lives changed and transformed. And we prophesy that every plant that our Heavenly Father has not planted shall be rooted out. In the mighty name of Jesus, may our children grow to know your truth. May they be safe from deception. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Say loud amen, somebody. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Praise Jesus. Were you blessed by that sermon? I know I was. Say, I have an unction from the Holy One. I cannot be deceived. I know all things. Say, I have an unction from the Holy One. I know all things. I will not be tossed to and fro by every word of doctrine. I am preserved in the truth. Praise Jesus. That is our testimony. Hallelujah. Now we'll be giving our offering. Well, while you package your offering, if you are going to be giving a tenth of your income this month, or if you've given it during the week, please rise on your feet. You see, at Celebration Church, we give a tenth of our income to partner with the gospel, with the things that God will do through us. Hallelujah. We know that we have received something worth more than the Israelites of old. We do not give because any devourer will devour us, no. We give because it, are, it is our responsibility to partner with our Father's message. Praise Jesus. So I want you to raise your hands or your envelope if you've given it during the week. And say, dear Father, I partner with my local church for the propagation of the gospel. I give not out of compulsion, but with a willing and cheerful heart, knowing that my resources will move the message of the gospel forward. I know that my source is from you, and therefore all I have will be used for your glory. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Now the rest of us, let's rise to our feet as we give our offerings. Outburst. Is a 
the great God. Yes, he is. She lifts me up. Hey, she lifts me up. He turns me around. He turns me around. to continue with you for your progress and faith, for your progress and joy in the faith this month and this week. There are platforms made available for you. We've been taught yesterday the privilege that is prayer, the power in prayer. So this week, make sure you join Triumph 30 Devotion Online on the Mixlab platform at 6 a.m., 12 noon, and 8 p.m. at night. Someone will be online to lead you in your personal time of devotion. So, pastor said that because you've prayed yesterday, it will be easy for you to pray today. Hallelujah. And you will continue, you will keep a consistent fervor in your prayer life. You will set your fire, your altar on fire. Praise Jesus. So, you will join Triumph 30 Devotion this week and for the rest of your life. Is that your testimony? Amen. Praise Jesus. So like Pastor also announced, midweek service holds on Wednesday and you would, it will do you good not to miss anyone. So tune online, 6 p.m. every Wednesday on the Celebration Church YouTube channel and you'll be sure to be blessed. Hallelujah. So we have some very special people in our midst this morning. If today is your first time as a member of Celebration Church, this is your first time here, I'd like you to rise on your feet. Smile at them, they like to know what 
of our lead pastor, it's my privilege to welcome you to Celebration Church International. We pray that we see you this Sunday, next Sunday, and every other Sunday for the rest of your life. And the church says, so there are some beautiful ladies and handsome men on the sides of the house. Please go with them. We have some very special gifts for you. Thank you very much. And if today is your second Sunday here at Celebration Church, please wave at me. Just wave. Praise Jesus! We are so excited to have you, and after this service, we'd like you to come to this side of the hall to take, we'd like to speak to you, and our pastor would like to take some pictures with you. Hallelujah! So, wait, did you have a blessed Sunday? Did you have a great yesterday? Would you set your prayer altar on fire? Now, I want you to jump up as we round up the service. What kind of week are you going to have? final note, listen, if what you, the fire you caught yesterday will stand the test of time, 6 a.m. tomorrow, in fact, start from this evening, 8 p.m. today, we're all tuning in on our devotional platform. Please make it a point of duty. Start, build a prayer life, all right? Be online on Wednesday, join um, the midweek service online also. Participate, try to eradicate all forms of distraction. It's service. Okay, um, and then all of you who um, are supposed to be part of the membership school immediately after the service, I just want you to sit here, you know, just come to me here, and then we're going to have a short class. God bless you. In the name of Jesus, the blessing of the Lord is on you. Your going out and your coming in is blessed. You are safe and secure, kept from all forms of harm and danger. In the mighty name of Jesus. The works of your hands are blessed. I say that again. The works of your hands are blessed. And in your walk with God, you are getting deeper and deeper. Stronger and stronger. Receive miracles this week. Let it be a week remembered for miracles. Miracles of healing. Miracles of favor. Miracles of supernatural intervention. That's your story. That's your song. In Jesus' mighty name, we've prayed. Amen. Let Pastor Pete take the benediction. Okay, let's do this together. We serve God by His Spirit. We boast in Christ Jesus. We put no confidence in the flesh. We experience progress and joy in the faith. Because we are... Celebration church in Christ for Christ we joy. God bless you. Have a great day.